everybody, Dave Do Ford, and chances are you're watching this video because you want to know how the money works selling life insurance. I'm going to go into detail about everything you need to know to maximize your pay and make the most money you can selling life insurance. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is revenue, expenses, and profit. So let's go a little bit more in detail onto how that works. So the first thing you gotta know is what is revenue? So revenue is pretty easy to understand. Think of it as your commission that you earn per life insurance policy. But Dave, how do I determine what commission I make per policy? Excellent question. This is what's known as the annual premium, or we call it AP for short. So how do you determine AP? Think of a monthly number that you would pay for a policy. Let's say it's $100 a month, and then you multiply that by 12 months because that's the annual premium, right? And that gives you a total of $1,200. So this is that number, 1,200 in annual premium, that we base the commission off. So if you say you got somebody who says, you're gonna be at a 50% commission contract, then you would simply multiply this number times 50% and guess what that gets you? $600 in commissionable revenue, okay? So you'll see why in a second I prefer the, the term revenue, but this is how we arrive at revenue. But there's one more thing that you need to know. Usually with most companies, you're not gonna get the $600 up front. You're only going to get a portion or prorated amount. We call this an advance on commission because when you get paid and you write a deal, Typically your client is paying one month at a time and because there's a risk of that client stopping payment, essentially you're getting a loan with the policy being used as collateral against that loan. And for percentage purpose, typically this number that you get is 75% of it. Sometimes it's 50% depending on the company and the carriers. But bottom line, let's say it's 75 times 600, that is 450 and so this is what I would like to call your cash flow revenue. This is what you see up front with the remaining 150, that's paid out in the last 25% of the first year, otherwise in months 10, 11, and 12, if that makes sense. And so you'll get that money, it's just not gonna come until the policy's on the books that whole time, and then months 10, 11, and 12 hit. So now that you know how your commission works, your revenue, the other factor you gotta consider always is what is the cost of doing business? So we call this the expenses, okay? So every business in the world, including your life insurance business, has expenses. So let's take a moment to talk about them. The most common expense that you're going to realize is leads, especially if you're in a business model that depends on you buying leads. So if you're, let's say for example, in the dig agency, my company, and you're not in our free lead program, you're buying leads. So what's gonna happen here is that you're gonna have some kind of, kind of out of pocket expense on a regular weekly recurring basis that you have to factor into the cost to actually do business and then net a profit. So let's say we sell five policies a week and let's say that the premium is $900, that's the annual premium, that's 4,500 in annual premium. Then we also subtract out the, uh, the 75%. My math is a little fuzzy here. I'm just gonna go ahead and call that 3,300. I think that's close enough. Probably round it down a little bit, all right? Let's say the leads that it costs to buy these. By the way, this is at 100% commission level, okay? This is where we put our agents to start who are buying their own leads. And, and final expense life insurance telesales or face-to-face -face life insurance telesales. If you get down to this number, this is the advanced amount you get up front. Well, now, let's say it costs a thousand bucks for leads. All right, that's your weekly recurring amount. Now we subtract a thousand dollars and then we end up with 2,300. Again, it's roughly in that area, my math is wrong, but you get the point. The, the costs are something you have to factor into it. So a lot of these organizations, they talk about this, just the premium sold. And it's a good beginning factor to assess how well you're doing. But the truth is, is that when you look at the math, what matters is what are we getting in our bank account after our expenses? And there are other expenses too. You may have, let's say a CRM cost. Typically, if you're buying your own leads, it's a couple hundred bucks a month. So you have to factor that into the uh, deduction as well. Or if you're driving around, selling insurance in person, the gas, the mileage, et cetera, as well. And of course, after you deduct for expenses from your revenue, what do you get? Show me the money you get profit. Profit is really what we're all concerned about, right? 
After we account for our expenses, how much money is left in the bank? This is what's left over. This is what's called net income. And this number is really the most important number in your life as a life insurance agent. And back into our example, what we don't, what we care about most is not how much money we're gonna make that entire year, but how much are we cash flowing? Because remember, there is a percentage of the deal that we're not going to get until the latter months at the end of that first 12 months of the policy. Bottom line, cash flow is king after your expenses, and this is what you care about getting the most out of. So this is just a beginner's version of how the money works selling life insurance, but I want you to stick with me because we're gonna do a very advanced training on the particularities of making money selling life insurance and how it all works, because quite frankly, you need to know it. This is a very simple explanation that we went through, but there's a lot of little nuances that your uplines, your trainers, the people you're bringing in aren't telling you, and I think you need to spend some time with me to understand what you're about to get in and those nuances which can cost you tremendously if you're ignorant of them. So back to revenue. One of the things that you need to be concerned about with revenue is the speed at which you get paid. So this is important. So if you're selling a life insurance product that requires a lot of underwriting, it requires medical information, it may take weeks before the actual policy gets approved. Where if you, if you sell something like a final expense plan, final expense is immediately approved on the first sales call is what's called simplified issue underwriting. And the advantage of simplified issue underwriting is that it allows for the policy to be approved faster. And when you get approved faster, that means you get paid money faster. And this is important when selling life insurance because most likely in this business, you're gonna have some kind of expense like we talked about. And here's the key thing, preferentially selling products that pay faster is gonna help you cash flow faster like we just got done talking about. This is why I am a big advocate of selling final expense as a first time agent's first product. Final expense pays fast. Final expense issues quickly. And this means you're going to get money quickly to pay your rent, pay your other bills, and to be able to survive longer than if you're selling a product that takes much longer to actually get approved. And there's some other things too here with the speed at which your advance happens based not just on the policy getting approved, but something we call being uh, issued or getting paid on issue versus get paid on first payment. Uh, some carriers will pay on, uh, immediately after the policy is approved, but the first payment hasn't went through. Some of them require that first payment to go through. So many times, in, let's say in the final expense business with us, we write the policy, but the first payment may not come out until a couple of weeks or a month later. So if you have a, a carrier that's on first payment, that's going to delay your first commission until that first payment successfully comes out. Whereas there's carriers out there that pay on issues. So before the plan is actually even paid for, you get your money, your advance commission up front. Other things that can affect your ability to generate revenue in this business is also your carrier selection. Now this is very important in the life insurance business because there's some fundamental realities about life insurance you have to know. Not one carrier is going to be best across the board for all of your clients. Now, if you're working with one carrier, and many of you out there may be looking at organizations that just push one particular product, the problem you're going to run into is that when you push this product on a client who's not necessarily getting the best deal, you run the risk of getting replaced because your price is either way too high or the value of the coverage is inferior to other carriers out there. So one way to enhance your revenue is by simply multiplying the amount of carriers that you get, okay? So instead of having one carrier, like what we do at the dig agency, is have many carriers. So we're able to shop around for our clients and give them the best combination of something that's very competitively priced in combination with a high quality value coverage. The benefit to you as the agent is that you sell more of your leads, which means you increase your revenue, and then you also keep more of your policies to prevent from chargeback. So you keep more of what you sell. Another thing you need to be concerned about with how your pay works on life insurance is your commission level as it relates to the agency you're a part of, okay? So there are some organizations out there who show you commission levels that frankly just aren't true. They'd say you're gonna be on the XYZ commission level, let's say it's 80, but when you actually read the comp grid, there's only one or two carriers which tend to be the highest price or hardest to place with that are actually at 80%. Then the rest of the good carriers are at like 50%, 60%. So make sure you're checking out when you look at an agency what the actual first year commission is. For example, if somebody joins a big agency, we show them a comp grid based off of all the first year commissions that they can expect as a new agent and what levels they can grow to over time. You wanna make sure that you have transparency because this is a common tactic 
to show you something that looks good on paper, but in all actuality is complete trash and ends up putting you in a position to make less money than you thought you were. Now let's do a little bit more of a deep dive when it comes to expenses, uh, because there's a lot of concern about expenses and problems with uh, over expenses, things that you're not aware of when you first start. So besides your lead cost and besides like your CRM cost, there's some other expenses we need to talk about. And the first ones we're gonna talk about, again, nobody really talks about this, is what's called chargebacks. So in case you are uninitiated in what a chargeback is, a chargeback is when you sell a policy, client buys it, but at some point during the first nine months decides to cancel the plan. So that money that you got, that advance commission, remember, typically a prorated portion of that money is then required to be returned back to the company. So now you're in a position where you owe money to the insurance carrier and you either have to write business, which is the most common way of getting rid of it, to replace that debt, or you have to cut a check to cover it. And the reason this is important because chargebacks are always a factor that you have to consider when projecting your income. Realistically, I would say 25% of your business, you need to account for falling off the books. Now this is reasonable, but it's not, um, it's, it's achievable to do better than this, but I'd rather put it conservatively for you guys out there as you do your numbers in order to make sure that the, the pay is actually worth your time. So for example, if we're gonna go back to that example we talked about earlier, $3,300, I would knock off another 25%. So that's going to be, uh, let's call it 800 bucks. So the actual pay on this is 2,400 before expenses. And in that example, we used a thousand. So the actual expense is more, more closer to $1,400 in cash flow than it is for 2,400. Now you won't actually get that charge back right away. It may take time, but I like accounting for that in the front end because it allows you to be more realistic with what your actual projected income is. Because chargebacks come and go, uh, it's hard to say exactly when they're gonna occur, but in your projections, you should make sure that you're projecting them correctly so that when you go to draw an income from your business, it's representative of, hey, a good percentage, 25% or so is, is going to fall off. And again, this is funny because a lot of the expense issues of chargebacks go back to our revenue issues with carrier selection. Again, one of the best ways to reduce chargebacks is by selling competitively priced carriers that give your clients a good value. I'll give you guys a perfect example. We work with a company at the big agency called Trinity Family Benefit. Excellent company with very competitive prices for generally your healthier final expense prospects. Our first year persistency, it's a, it's a measure of how much of the business written stays on the books, is close to 94%. The average in the business for persistency is closer to 75% to 80%. Now, why is there such a dramatic difference in persistency? Well, bottom line, it has to do with the fact that it's competitive, okay? And when you write competitively priced carriers, it's easier to keep your clients on the books. So why is that important? Well, to reduce this number, you need to start writing better carriers, which goes back to the point of having multiple carriers because every client situation is different and writing a carrier that's best suited for that person's health and what their budget is, is the best way to keep more business on the books and to reduce the chargeback risk exposure. Okay, some other things to consider with expenses. We also wanna mention the speed of lead turnaround. So this is why I like to, for especially for the remote telesales people to use Facebook leads. The ability to turn around your leads is quick with Facebook leads, typically like in our alpha lead program for final expense, we've got agents getting leads within a couple of days. So their outlay of, of capital to buy leads, right, your expenses, is able to be realized much faster with a particular type of lead than say direct mail, which may take three, four, five plus weeks of your money tied up in direct mail before you can even start selling those leads. So your ability to turn around your lead purchase and turn them into actual people you can you can sell to is helpful because it keeps what's called your working capital amount low so you don't have to have a lot of money tied up in leads to make sales and make a profit a couple other things too as well uh, i would call it your cost of doing business effectiveness uh, essentially you know we all have uh, in most cases in the life insurance business some cost associated uh, with you know buying leads or doing business but just because you're buying a particular type of lead isn't the full story. How effective is the lead in converting, okay? So what, in other words, what we care about here is what's your acquisition cost, okay? 
So some leads are cheap, but the acquisition cost, meaning how much do I have to spend on leads eventually to get a client? They may be very high, but you may have a higher price lead that you need less of, which results in a lower acquisition cost so that you, you may spend, hey, I may spend $70 a lead, but it takes me three of those leads to get one sale, whereas I spend $10 to so it takes 50. So which is the better lead? Well, it's the one that's more expensive. So the thing with this, with expenses, is make sure you're always tracking how effective the lead sources you are using Using actually are because we want to make sure that your outlay of capital into leads is effective and it's getting results and it's giving you a low cost of doing business uh, factor or your acquisition costs that is much lower than the actual average profit that you're making per sale and we'll end here with profit and I'm just gonna stick it down here at the bottom because it's profit is profit and the thing here is that cash flow is king this is really the main thing you got to worry about in this business. I already said it before, but it is really important. Cash flow is king in this business. How fast can you get paid the money that you're, you're making on sales? If it's slow, a lot of agents are going to find themselves failing out of the business, which again is why I like final expense so much because the speed to getting paid and the ability to control for your expenses and to profit is much, much easier for the newer agent or the agent getting started that just doesn't have a lot of money. So as we wrap this up, there's a couple of, I would call intangible aspects to making money and how the money works and selling final expense or life insurance products that you really need to know that are absolutely worth mentioning. And I'm gonna go into them now because they encompass everything that we're talking about. And the first point here is that inputs are king. Okay, now what do I mean by inputs? Now all of what we've been talking about are outputs, the money that we make from a sale, right? The net profit that we get, the cash flow profit that we get. Well, what gets the cash flow? What gets all this stuff? Well, ultimately it's this, it's the inputs, right? You can control the inputs, meaning you can control how many calls you make, how many doors you knock on, how many leads you buy. And ultimately your ability to scale and work those inputs or what's going to be responsible for the outputs, the sales and the cash flow that you make. So the one thing I want you to understand, regardless of where you're working, regardless of the type of leads that you're working, it's your initiative getting on the phone. It's your initiative and in getting in front of the prospect to sell them and your ability to do that again and again and again and the time on task that ultimately is best at determining how successful and how much money you're gonna make in this business. So while it's important to think about how many sales you're gonna make, I want you to be thinking how many dials you're gonna make a day? How much talk time on the phone are you gonna do? How many doors are you gonna knock on? That is what really ultimately translates into how many sales you're gonna make. And as soon as you make that connection between inputs and outputs, the more successful you're really gonna be selling insurance. Now, there's some very important stuff that we need to cover too when it comes to expenses that I would call phantom expenses. Now, a phantom, of course, is something you can't see. It's not obvious, it's kinda like a ghost. And that element does exist in the life insurance business. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things that aren't necessarily things you're gonna pay for out of your pocket, but can cost you dearly. So number one on the list here is your vestation, okay? <clears throat> now, what does this mean? Vesting refers to your ability to own your book of business. If you are not vested and you get fired from your life insurance job, all those sales and residual income that you would have earned, you don't get paid on. So for example, there are people in our business that set up life insurance business models that don't have you owning your book of business. And so you'll make all these sales and you're expecting the, the back 25% on the advance to pay, but if you get let go, you do not get this at all because you don't own the book of business. There's a company in this business that takes 10 years to vest there's another company, very popular on YouTube, it takes two years before you own your book of business and you're paying for leads. It's crazy, folks. So one way to enhance your profitability and the money you make is to just deal with companies that vest you from the first day. Of course, my agency, the Dig Agency, every single agent is 100% vested from the first day. So y'all don't have to worry about that if you're working with me. The second thing you gotta worry about is be suspicious of contracts. So here's the deal, guys. I tell agents, I've told agents this for, for 11 years now. Agents will ask me, 
what does your contract look like? I'll tell them I don't have a contract. The only thing you're gonna sign is the boilerplate carrier paperwork that puts you and my agency and then appoints you to the carrier. And anything more than that, you've gotta be very wary that you may be stepping into a position to where you are going to get the short end of the stick. For example, a lot of these agencies out there, very popular YouTube influencers, they have these contracts that restrict their ability to do business selling insurance, like for two to five years, and put these onerous restrictions on the agents to impede their ability to actually do business. So guys, if you're presented with a contract, don't just sign it. Read through it, think about what's said, ask questions about that. And if it doesn't smell right, then run the other direction and find a company that's not gonna put you in a position to contract you with something that you're just not comfortable with. Number three, be very wary of misleading comp plans. Now we talked about this briefly, but I'll bring it up again. There's a lot of organizations out there that say their starting commission is X, Y, Z, but then the other carriers out there actually pay less. Again, don't just jump in with both feet, actually do your due diligence, research what it is that you're looking at to see if it all passes the smell test. And number four, make sure when it comes to the company that you are working with that you get a company that will actually release you upon demand. So what is a release? Well, imagine you're in a situation with an agency where you were brought in, you were promised the world, but they didn't deliver on their promises. In the meantime, you've gotten on the phone, you've made some sales, and you like the carriers that you work with, but you don't wanna work with the agency. Well, if the agency doesn't release, then those carriers are stuck with that agency at least six months, sometimes up to 12 months. And then you've gotta start over and find other carriers to work with in the meantime. This is a huge headache. If you can't work with the carriers that you're comfortable with, it may have an impact on your ability to sell insurance. The solution is simple. Just work with agencies that will actually release you on demand as long as you don't owe chargeback money. And that tells you that they're strong enough in their conviction on what it is to do for them to help you that they're willing to let you go if it just isn't a good fit. And again, that's what we've always done at the dig agency is we release agents on command because we're confident in what we do as being an awesome solution for agents. And if for some reason it doesn't work out, then there's always the door and they can go where they want so they can have a great insurance career. So the last thing I wanna talk about are compounding factors that help you write more business and make more money. Again, this is, these are intangible things, but you should absolutely be aware of it. So number one, is choose the broker model over captive. Again, very simple. You don't wanna work with a captive company in most cases because they usually just have one carrier. Where here they have many. And then having many carriers equals more money because you're able to offer better options to your client because you can shop around. Whereas captive, you're forced to push product on clients. Nobody likes anybody pushing products on clients. And if you're a person of conscience, you're gonna realize eventually like, I'm not doing my clients the best job that I can. I'm willingly putting them in inferior products. And what does that say about my capability as an agent ethically? Again, something is better than nothing, of course, with it when it comes to life insurance, but I don't wanna be in that mental predicament. And that's why I choose the many carrier approach versus one. Another factor you've got to choose as well is outbound or inbound leads. So when it comes to leads, you can either do outbound, which is where you call the leads as, uh, as the leads come in, or you can do inbound leads, and that's where you sit around and wait on the dials. And that's a nice thing because presumably how it sounds is it's supposed to work, is that the leads call you and then you sell the leads. But the problem with most inbound situation is you're in a position where you gotta sit around and wait. And many times those inbound leads are very expensive because they're generated on TV in most cases. And for most agents, they're kind of out of reach and it seems it's very, uh, very painful when you get a $70 TV lead and it doesn't convert, or you're at a very low commission in order to justify the expense. So my recommendation in order to control the inputs, remember the inputs are what matter, is to go with an outbound lead strategy. We at Dig Agency do an outbound strategy called the Alpha Lead Program. And that's really where we generate a lot of fresh, exclusive, high quality leads for our agents and then provide them in mass. And their job is just to dial, dial, dial. And the, by doing that dialing, they're able to control their inputs and ultimately do more presentations and make more sales than waiting around on TV leads, which sometimes are great, but other times are very slow in turnaround of leads. And the last little bit of advice is make sure when it comes to the agency that you search one out that's all about sales first. 
Again, so much of this business is multi-level marketing focused with recruiting people to recruit over actually learning how to sell. So it's important, it's important to make sure that the organization that you have has trainers, coaches, mentors, has the ability to train you on a script that will help you get better at the weaknesses that you have in your game. And because that kind of dedication is what's gonna give you the best chances of being successful and overcoming the steep learning curve that comes with selling life insurance successfully. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you got a lot of value out of this. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. If you're looking for an agency to call home and you're interested in selling remotely or in person, and maybe you're interested even in getting free leads and not paying for them, go to daviddufour.com, that's my website, and that will give you more information about the Dig Agency and how we train agents to become top producers. What sets us apart, of course, is our world-class training, our awesome proprietary lead program, and really I think the best opportunity on the planet for brand new agents or agents who are looking to get into the business and make good money. Again, go to daviddufour.com to learn more, and thank you for watching.